Thank you, Peter. The Jewish Film Festival is an important cultural institution in our community. Yet, as Peter noted, this year there has been an uproar, not only from our local Jewish community, but from Jewish communities around the country and overseas over the film festival's choice of this film and speaker. My presence here should in no way be considered as either endorsing or even adequately balancing this event. These few minutes cannot in any way provide an appropriate response to the next two hours. I came here today to give voice to a different perspective, the perspective of the wider spectrum of the Bay Area and global Jewish communities, including our own community institutions, such as the Jewish Community Relations Council, the J, our community's newspaper, and including the respected Talbi and Perret Foundations, all of whom have expressed strong opposition to this program as being inappropriate for a Jewish film festival. All of us here know that Rachel Corey tragically died when she intentionally put herself, herself in harm's way during an IDF counterterrorism operation in the Gaza. But many of us don't know the names of other young American victims. Abigail Lytell, a 14-year-old Baptist girl from New Hampshire, murdered when a suicide bomber blew up a bus in Haifa on March 5, 2003. David Gritz, age 24, Benjamin Bloodstein, age 25, and UC Berkeley student Marla Bennett, age 24, all murdered on July 31, 2002, by a suicide bomber in the cafeteria at Hebrew University. And there are Israeli Rachels. Rachel Levy, age 17, was murdered in Jerusalem on March 29, 2002, by a suicide bomber. Rachel Thaler, age 16, died February 27, 2002, as a result of injuries when a suicide bomber exploded himself in the Sabaro Pizzeria in Jerusalem 11 days earlier. And there are more, too many more, Israeli Rachels. And none of them were engaged in anything more risky than riding a bus, or going to buy a slice of pizza or a cup of coffee. And just as Rachel Corey should be alive today, so should all of these young men and women. They were all murdered before Rachel Corey went to Gaza. That's why the young IDF soldier was operating that bulldozer in Rafa. It wasn't too long. It wasn't to wantonly destroy Palestinian homes. It was <laughs> Struggle. And as ISM co founder George Rishmawi said, 
If some of these foreign volunteers get shot or even killed, then the international media will sit up and take notice. They have used Rachel's accidental death to accuse Israel of intentionally murdering innocents. You will hear Israel's counterterrorism measures demonized, but not why they were necessary. You won't hear about the organized, savage suicide bombing war that Palestinians unleashed against Israel in 2000, a war that murdered over 1,000 Israelis, mostly civilians, and wounded over 7,000 others using bombs filled with razor blades, nails, and rat poison. A war fought not for a Palestinian state that Arafat had already rejected, but against Israel's very existence. And you will not hear about another foreign volunteer who was killed near Gaza. Carlos Chavez, a 20-year-old from Ecuador, was shot in the back while he planted potato seeds at a communal farm in Israel, about 100 meters from the Gaza border. His murder occurred on January 15, 2008, two and a half years after Israel had completely withdrawn from Gaza. His crime was simply being in the state of Israel, the same crime for which the Hamas Charter threatens all Israeli Jews with death. You won't hear about the incessant anti-Semitic incitement that pervades Palestinian media, schools, and mosques, instilling hatred of Jews, celebrating those who kill them as heroes and martyrs, and denying Israel's very right to exist. You won't hear about the founding document of Hamas, which they still stand by today, and which openly calls for the murder of Jews everywhere. I have copies of excerpts from their charter right here, but it's easy to find online. You won't hear about the 8,000 rockets. You won't hear about the 8,000 rockets that have been launched from Gaza into Israel, a small country just the size of New Jersey. You won't hear about a Palestinian leadership that has failed its people miserably by using the billions they have received in foreign aid to build bombs and rockets rather than schools and hospitals. This episode should lead to some serious and thoughtful discussion about the role and the responsibility that a Jewish film festival should take within our community. A Jewish film festival should not be presenting a film and speaker that demonize Israel. And that are And promoted by groups such as Jewish Voice for Peace in America. Thank you.